Well, good day, eh? So, I had some wisdom teeth taken out of my head, and I gotta freeze my incredibly swollen cheeks, so I might look kinda funny for this video. But, for this one, we're still gonna continue talking about the original Marvel shared universe from 1966, and for this character introduction, we're gonna talk about... Iron Man! Oh yeah! So, as per usual, we'll recap the episode itself, I'll give you some of my thinky thoughts about the episode and all that stuff, and then we'll talk some more things about the episode and the MCU and all that stuff after. So, alright, let's go! So, we have this awesome guy named Tony Stark. He's a super genius, an industrialist, a futurist, and currently in his like super massive laboratories, he built this major incredible wind tunnel, which is super powerful so he could do some testing on some stuff, probably on some weapons or you know, or, or something. But the wind machine in the wind tunnel totally went berserk. The wind is out of control. It's like a scene out of Wizard of Oz, <laughs> like some mechanical twister. So Tony Stark slaps on his Iron Man and armor flies down there and like saves the day by destroying the wind mechanisms of the air uh, wind tunnel. The place is destroyed but at least no one was seriously hurt. Tony noticed that the batteries that charge his superpower suit and keep his heart pumping have been pretty drained. So he's like, oh crap, I should probably check into this. But the alarm sounds. Somebody is trying to break into Tony Stark's vault of scientific discoveries. Iron Man quickly finds out that it's Professor Shapinka, one of Tony Stark's most trusted scientists. And Shapinka's like, nah, I want to break into here because Tony Stark has the secret of immortality. Like, what? Okay, Tony Stark builds a lot of things, but like builds a formula for immortality? I kind of call phony baloney on that, but you know, dude believes that Tony Stark has that information. So, meh. So, Shapinka is arrested, but Tony Stark decides not to press charges on him, you know, because of all the good work he's done for him in the past. But it's kind of dumb because Shapinka's like, You'll rue this day. I'll get back at you, Tony Stark. I'll get you. You would think that's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You actually arrest that guy. He sounds kind of crazy and dangerous. But nope. I wonder if this will bite Tony Stark in the ironed behind later. Meanwhile, another thing Tony Stark was working on was this experimental race car called the Stark Special, and it's being unveiled today in a race. But the driver of the car got totally sick and he can't go. The pit crew doesn't know what to do, so Tony Stark flies down there and decides to drive the car himself. However, halfway through the drive, the aforementioned batteries that keep Tony Stark's heart pumping drops down to a critical level and Tony Stark crashes the car. Horribly. Luckily, Tony is pulled out of the wreckage from the car by this really awesome dude named Harry Hogan, also known as Happy, and Tony is all like, just take me back to my motel room, man. You know, I'll be fine there. You know, just leave me be once I'm there. Happy's kind of like, man, you know, I, I should probably take it to the hospital because they can they can help you there. But sure, whatever. You want to go to the hotel room? Yeah, I'm fine with me. And in that room, Tony Stark recharges his heart batteries, so all is good. To thank Happy, Tony hires him as his chauffeur, and Happy is later introduced to Tony's secretary, Pepper Potts. And suddenly, we almost have some kind of a love triangle thing going on because Happy. Happy really likes Pepper, but Pepper really loves Tony, and Tony, well, he just loves being Iron Man. <laughs> Another meanwhile, Professor Shapinka finds out that part of the immortality process is being frozen, so he builds himself this suit that can you know, freeze himself so he can be frozen and immortal and, well, go on a crime spree because that's what you do, right? He steals $40,000 from a bank and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna get my revenge on Tony Stark. You know, that guy who dropped all charges against me after I tried to break into his vault, steal all of his secrets on immortality, which I just actually kind of discovered myself. I'm, I'm gonna get revenge on that guy. And so he kind of does. He breaks into Tony's offices, he freezes Pepper and Happy, but luckily, Tony got into his Iron Man armor just in time. He had a quick little kind of battle duking it out with uh, Shapinko. The professor got a bit of an upper hand at first, but Iron Man used his heat beams on his suit to destroy Shapinka's suit and then to thaw out all the uh, frozen victims. So this time Shapinka is arrested and charges are pressed. So that should be the end of you know, of that, but we'll see. So yeah, the day is saved and other than that, uh, uh, that's the end of this uh, fantastic tale. So this one was actually pretty awesome, I thought. 
So in my previous video when I was talking about that first Captain America episode and how there was so many things going on, they were just jumping from storyline to storyline, it was just a mangled mess of stories. This episode was much more streamlined. There was only two major stories, one flowed into the other and had a nice good pace and a good storytelling like all around. The same kind of thing with the really basic, you know, almost no animation going on, you know? It is really neat how they kind of rely on narration to kind of explain what the character would be doing if he was actually animated to move, you know? Instead of just animating him. But it was a pretty fun episode, and it was really awesome to see Iron Man wearing his Mark II iron armor. You don't really get to see that too often, and it was only a really short kind of amount of time where he actually wore this uniform, so to see it at least for one episode? pretty awesome. So for an intro episode, this one was actually really awesome. And if you haven't seen it, you know, check it out. And as I said before, you're not watching a cartoon, you're watching a comic book come to life. So let's take a deeper look into that living comic book uh, phenomena. So as I just mentioned in the previous Captain America video, this cartoon is part of a larger TV show, the Marvel Superheroes, and that the Iron Man show is just a small part of it, which features five main characters. The show consists of multi seven minute long little segments all strewn together with these five different characters but eventually these shows were rebroadcast as each character's show and those segments from those characters were just put together for you know an episode here and there so it kind of works out these stories are completely taken from the comic book issues not just inspired by you know, like these are literally the comic books. The panels from each scene are just loosely animated. It took out the word bubbles and boom, you have a lazily animated cartoon. <laughs> so for this particular episode, the bulk of the story is taken from Tales of Suspense number 45 from 1963. And in there, we have all the main points of the whole story. There's the race car that Tony is driving. There's the race car crash that happens. We have the first introductions of Pepper Potts and Happy Hogan. Happy saves Tony from the car crash and gets a job with him. Professor Shapinka, you know, getting the frost suit and becoming that character, Jack Frost. Tony's golden Mark II Iron Man suit, you know, stuff like that, all exactly completely taken from the pages of the comics. The first part of the episode featuring the wind tunnel and the accident therein, that was taken from Tales of Suspense number 43. So just little parts of stories kind of put together and it somehow worked into a pretty cohesive episode. And really not that much further back, we had Iron Man himself first debut in Tales of Suspense number 39. His golden iron suit made its debut in the next issue of Tales of Suspense number 40 because some lovely lady kind of told him that it would be cool if Iron Man, you know, looked like a knight in shining golden armor. So this stuff is all relatively like brand spanking new at that point anyway. So seeing as the show was aired in 1966, man, that's just three years after these comic books were released. Kind of goes to show how quick and hard of a push they had to introduce these new characters into the mainstream. And you know, it pretty much seemed to work you know, I guess. So let's compare this episode to the MCU, and it's pretty much a copy and paste in every way. Well, for the most part, like you got Tony Stark, he's a weapons making billionaire, and he got this iron armor suit made, you know, to be Iron Man. In the MCU, he's really quick to publicly announce that he is in fact Iron Man, whereas in the comics, he is still very much wanting to keep his iron identity as a secret. Basically saying Iron Man is his good friend and somewhat of a bodyguard with Harry Happy Hogan. Pretty much the same thing, you know, Tony's right hand man, he's his chauffeur, he's his bodyguard, uh, he was a former boxer. All same kind of stuff, really no change there. Virginia Pepper Potts, you know, she's nicknamed Pepper because, you know, she had a bunch of freckles that were peppered on her face, right? <laughs> Again, similar story. Tony's secretary in the cartoon, Tony's personal assistant in the MCU until she became the CEO of the company. In this episode, she's more infatuated with Tony Stark first, whereas in the MCU, Tony was more interested in her first, but still basically the whole same lovey-dovey thing, right? 
There is no Professor Sharpinka in the MCU, but he is a character that was friendly with Tony Stark that eventually turned into a foe of his, and that's basically the storyline of every Iron Man villain in the MCU, right? So you know, that part kind of checks out. The Iron Man Mark II suit in the comic books is this gold one featured in the episode, whereas in the MCU, the Mark II suit is still a gray color that was the test flight suit. It was the Mark III suit in the MCU that had the gold alloy added to it to help with the anti-freezing process, but Tony didn't like that it's all gold, so that's when he added the red, but still a nice little casual nod to this gold suit. In the show and in the comics, the iron suit is collapsible and can easily fit in a briefcase. Whereas in the MCU, as we've seen in Iron Man 2, Tony's Mark V suit was the suit that was made that could fit in the size of a briefcase and easily accessible. And he first used that suit after that crazy car crash on the racetrack. Hey, eh? it all comes full circle, man. So again, you know, that's just the basics of the character and his friends, his co-workers and all that. So we'll see how this all flushes out, you know, in future episodes. So yeah, it's all pretty good. And yeah, other than that, I guess uh, that's that. Right on and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.